Hey everyone, it is Larry here at LC Model Shipbuilding. As you can see, we have mini brass on our hull. So this entire episode is devoted to installing that. Um, I'm still putting the other side on, so I don't have both sides on, but at least I got one on. Uh, the other side has the first piece on, but um, I still got a little ways to go. You can see how much cutting has happened back here um, on that back half. So you'll see what we go through on that. Um, it took about a week to get here. So I know I haven't posted any videos lately. I apologize, but uh, it took some time to do this. So um, hopefully, hopefully this helps somebody out there. And uh, if you're doing mini brass with Titanic, I will tell you that it is not for the faint of heart. Um, don't do this if, if you're a beginner. It, it just, there, there's a lot to it. So. Anyway, um, hopefully this helps you, and uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Okay, so here we go. This is all of the panels built, um, basically ready to be installed onto the ship. So our next phase is going to be getting the, um, the plastic on the hull ready to go. Uh, again, I know I showed it quite a bit in the other video, but there you go. You can see all of the uh, rivet detail throughout. It is really quite spectacular. So that is essentially what it looks like all put together and ready to go. We'll be back here in a minute. Okay, so here we go with the next step in what we're going to do. Um, all of the detail on here needs to go away and what I'm going to do is basically lay this over here and get myself lined up now I was wrong in the last video the portholes along here actually are pretty darn well drilled out but we're going to elongate them a little bit so what I want to do is basically make myself kind of a template on where I need to cut well not cut but sand smooth out whatever you want to call it and basically I'm going to line up to that hull plate right there and make sure that my windows portholes whatever you prefer to call them portholes we'll call them are also lined up pretty exact now we're going to be running right along the hall plate so it won't be too hard to make sure we're in the right spot so I'm basically just going to draw my line right along here so that I know where to well basically where my barriers are the culling doors also will get taken out and there's a piece that comes along here but there's no rivet detail here so I'm not that worried about that again I'm just making sure the portholes molded in the plastic are pretty solid here and lined up however I do know that this whole line here will go all the way pretty much aft to the back at this point so I'm just gonna pick up again kind of where I left off with the last piece and draw my line which like I said I know is right there he's got to go away And obviously I'm not that worried about the line being 100% perfect because it'll all be paint covered anyway and all of that good stuff. So the next step after I get all my line drawn is going to be dr to drill out all these holes. Now again I'm not as worried about the drill bit bouncing or dancing because 
the metal will cover it. And last but not least, we've got this guy here. This one does go a little bit lower. However, there's no real detail on any of these parts. So, I'm not that concerned. Okay, so that essentially <coughs> is what we need to make smooth all up in here. That all has to go away. So let me drill some holes. I'm going to drill out these port holes and uh, then we're going to smooth this all down. Okay, so while drilling these holes, don't be as scared to go big. And I'll show you why. Um, here's one of the front ones. And if you look what happens if you go about the same size as the hole that um you're drilling wait a minute i got the wrong one here if you go the same size here you'll be able to see the plastic kind of on the edge there so what i'm doing and others have done it before as well. I'm going much bigger with the hole intentionally. And you can't see near as much plastic in there. And that will be painted black. So it won't really be nearly as noticeable. So go big with the holes. It's okay. Um, you're going to be completely destroying all the detail anyway on here so it really does not matter and um, once the uh, metal is on there oh, wrong one again wait no it's not once the metal is on there it will completely not be noticeable so there's this one and you really can't see any of the plastic so just to call out, figured I'd mention. Okay, so this part has been extremely messy and um, I don't know, there's, there's, this, this is everywhere. Uh, but anyway, um, as you can see, I got most of this rough, rough uh, smoothed and now I'm gonna go over it with some sandpaper just basically to get it smoothed down in a sanding block. Uh, I know the windows are epically ugly and all that kind of stuff that's going on. I accidentally drilled out a hole right there that uh, I shouldn't have. So that's patched in right now. But um, in any case, I'm going to get this sanded down. I didn't video it because it's honestly just noisy. Um, what I am doing and how I'm doing it is basically Dremel. And uh, yeah, as you can see... It's loud, so there was no real point in videoing that. I think you pretty much get the point of what's happening. So, like I said, I'm going to get this sanded down. Got to do the other side quick, and then uh, then it'll be time to start fitting up some uh, photo etch. So, it's coming. I know it's ugly. It's coming. Okay, so we are sanded down now. We are pretty darn smooth, yet still rough. Um, just basically used a little bit of uh, 60 grit on it and uh, found one spot I missed. And I was using a block uh, for the most part. So I feel pretty confident now that we're in good shape. So before we go doing any uh, sticking, sticking down of uh, any photo etch, I'm gonna kinda go through, clean up the holes one more time with the drill um, just to make sure any of them that were uh, kind of closed in from the sanding and the grinding are uh, are pretty well uh, opened back up and then uh, next step we'll be putting on some brass so we'll be back in a minute okay so 
got the sanding and all that good stuff and clearing of portholes pretty well done. So what I want to do now, I sanded the seam line down here. Um, that way when I go to install my hall plates, I don't have a lip going on there. But right now I'm going to mark my center point um, and then we're going to measure off to put the porthole windows that did not come. I don't know if I can even get an angle here on this. Um, but we're missing windows that go along here. So the first two are five millimeters out of center. So we're gonna do them. Yeah, that, that should work. I have to hit it a little bit better with sanding, I think, but um, not too bad. I'll do that here after I get this done. So five millimeters, we'll put that right there. So I'm just going to mark that. On each side. And then the next one is seven millimeters. So let me just adjust my caliper. double check that I don't think that's seven millimeters be right back okay I double checked it is 12 millimeters so I'm glad I double checked that um, it definitely did not look right so 12 meter millimeters off of the first one for the center of the window Okay, that looks better. So I'm gonna drill them out quick and we will be back. Okay, so they are drilled and they look about right. Um, yeah, pretty good all in all. So I guess at this point, I'm gonna sand this up a little bit, get this a little bit better here. And then uh, it'll be time to start doing our our photo etch here very soon. We got uh, two Hossie holes that need to go right in here too. I need to measure them off real quick and I believe right over here. So I'm gonna check where they go, get them drilled, and we'll be back. Okay, now Trumpeter did not drill these out on the, on the stern section. They did on the front. So I found that a drill bit, actually one size up, um, the one that I was using in the larger of the portholes, so this one here, fits right in there perfect. I already did the other side. And all I did was draw it in and then work it back and forth until I got to the other side. So this will be covered, this will be covered with the uh, photo etch anyhow, but you will still be able to see through it. So that's how I'm doing it. I've seen some people that have cut them out with a knife. I chose not to do that. This just seemed easier, and it will work. If I don't scratch it. Okay. So, other thing, the hoss holes, or hossy holes, however you pronounce that, I, I stink of terminology. I'm going to end up using foil tape on the back side of them so you don't get light through them because they're not supposed to be lit. Sorry, I guess I got that a little close, but they are drilled out. So pretty much gonna do a final run through here. Just make sure everything's good. And then we're going to get some decking out 
not the actual decks, but the pieces of the kit so that we make sure that our side plates are lined up because back here we'll have a stationary spot basically where this spot is right here um, that will sit so we're going to get that out and uh, basically use that to kind of give us a guide plate so that as we as we move out with the photo etch we're in the right spot oops that's the other side so let me get a piece on here so that will go here essentially but it may move just a little bit and I am seeing some holes that aren't perfectly lined up so I want to double check some of them before we end up gluing any of this down because they should be pretty well okay at this point and I know that goes that starts right there but yeah you can see there is still hole or there is still plastic in here so I'm going to end up cutting more um, before we get moving. And it looks like these portholes here all are going to have to get changed as well. So this is the fun of doing modifications. So we are not ready to glue. But I'm going to check the rest of it and uh, make the modifications needed. And then we'll be back. Okay, so I got all my wind or portholes pretty much now to the point where everything's lining up. Everything looks pretty beauteous. I'm pretty excited with it at this point. So I got to drill out the other side. I did end up, end up going with a different type of bit. Um, I'm using one of these diamond cut type deals now. So the holes are quite large. But they really need to be in order to do this um, so that you don't really see the plastic behind them. So um, they also will cut down on a little bit of weight, I'm sure, uh, being it, it has been a fairly significant amount of um, material that has been cut off. So in looking at this, I've been talking to Robbie, the model boat guy, and his build is slightly different because he did not use the mini brass here. So what I'm thinking I'm going to end up doing with this because his would have lifted off basically right here at this point and his decks would all come off. I'm going to have to go up and what I think I'm going to do is basically cut right here and mine will lift off at promenade deck and the rest of this then will remain down here on the uh the hull so that is kind of what my plan is looking like and then i'm going to magnetically connect the deck um to the uh to the hull so once i kind of get this figured out oops i guess i'm way up here um we're going to go ahead and cut that and how i'm going to do that i i have a mini table saw so that is what I'm planning on using. The windows line up a lot better on here. Um, so I don't see as much of an issue with the, um, with the superstructure side. There's still definitely some misalignment. But again, I'll be drilling the holes big um, to alleviate that problem. And then that will land right there, and the Woody's, um, or Maritime models, whatever you want to call it nowadays, that will actually protrude out here a little bit, where you'll be able to see the rafters underneath there anyway. So I'm pretty sure this is going to work. The big part that I'm going to have a lot of trimming on is back here at these windows right in here, and these windows right in here. So 
The pillars are going to get knocked out. I'm not worried about them. I'm going to take them off altogether. And then uh, we'll uh, basically go from there. So we're going to drill it out and uh, we'll be back. Okay, so, oops. So I did the first one. Um, now you can see the promenade deck uh, is basically separated from the B deck. And that would have gone like that originally. So the brass, like I said, is going to come up straight up flush to the end up here. And then that's where my liftoff point will be. Now, I elongated all of the holes for the windows. Um, two reasons, because I am going to do all the interior rooms that are going to be in here. And uh, I don't want to see the plastic in them. And it was really close in the plastic, or not the plastic, but the... Um, when you hold the brass up but uh this just kind of ensured it and the other small reason um was just to kind of make sure it's getting enough light through uh in in those sections so back here you can see i only kept every other upright and i'm going to just grab the piece of brass real quick so it's this ends up essentially sitting, oops, I'm in the wrong spot. This ends up sitting right here. So as you can see, those windows down there for where the, uh, what would that be, the veranda? Um, is that the veranda? No, I'm in the wrong spot. But anyway, those windows will look very metal-like, um, not overly thick and or anything like that. And then up here, once you have these uh, windows here where um, you're going to be able to see a lot less of the side to side because we only have the one support going up on these sections. So let me continue doing some cutting and uh, be back to you. I'll kind of probably do the next one on film. This is the uh, little mini table saw I was talking about work pretty good um, it does melt some plastic as you're going but uh, it's actually pretty simple to shave off and then I just got to sand it down now when I use the Woody's detail kit I know most of this goes away anyway and it really turns into just a couple little stanchion pieces that stay up uh, to hold this upper support on here so anyway um, I'll show you on the next section here basically what we do to go ahead and cut these and get them ready i know it's kind of ugly um but at the end of the day you really have to do it when you're when you're putting these together so be back in a okay minute. so here we go and oh as hard as it is to do something like this what we're going to do is cut right along here so that we save that roof and have it retained and basically have this piece going flat then we're going to sand down all this detail, and uh, this side will pretty much be ready to get attached to the ship. So I'm going to go ahead and cut. And it's kind of a slow process. And like I said, it gets ugly where it does this. Don't, if you do something similar to this, don't try to push this off while it's uh, hot because it will distort the rest of your uh, your parts there. So let it cool down. And it does tend to kind of slow the blade down, so you have to just keep restarting. basically how that looks. Now let me do the other side. the 
it is very tempting to want to pull with that, but I really shouldn't. Now, as a safety precaution, I am wearing glasses. Um, I do have the safety shields removed from this, so if you do something like this, be very, very, very careful. You don't want anybody to lose a finger. That would not be good. Keeping the safety uh, screen on would not enable me to cut this real well either. As you can see it's really ugly so once it's cool which it pretty much is now you can basically just kind of pull these pieces back off and uh, it all pretty much just goes away so not a big deal and I'm glad I just cleaned my mat because it's gonna be filled with plastic yet again but whatever okay there we go that one's pretty well there what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do the every, every other window pretty much and elongate it. To elongate them, here's what I was doing. I basically took my nipper and I'm taking about an eighth of an inch on each side and clipping it. And it basically brings it right down to the end. So I just pretty much run the course all the way down. Now this one has that stanchion in between. I'm going to end up just popping that one out altogether and elongate the other side here. Okay. The hardest part is just destroying the detail that the kit actually had, but I do know it's for the greater good, so it is what it is. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get these cut up, um, and then I'll shave it down. When we get back, I'll probably have both sides ready. So um, we'll uh, basically, at that point, get ready to start affixing it to the hull, um, doing a final measure through. Uh, this upper promenade deck, that is going to end up being part of when uh, I do a video for Woody's um, his side plating. So these are going to end up just kind of going back and staying, uh, staying put for right now because I have no need for them until we are ready to move to that level. All right, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, we've come to a big part in this build. Um, all of these are pretty much ready to go. I know they look nothing like they originally did, um, but they are ready to be set. So I have the decking here so that I just make sure I am in the right location as to where that needs to land and what we're going to do is glue these on and let them sit for a little bit let them kind of set up with the glue um, and then after that the uh, photo etch will go on so pretty uh, pretty excited to be at this point um, this has taken close to a week at this point uh, those of you who watch the channel know that I usually post a video or two a week um, I think I'm almost at like six days without posting at this point so um, more important to get it done and right than to uh, post it's kind of how I'm looking at it so I'm using uh, Tamiya cement for this I know I generally am that uh, I still use that testers um, orange tube usually for a lot of stuff but uh, for this one I am going to go with the Tamiya cement I know it works well 
and I should have no issues. So we're just going to get a nice little bead of it along here where it connects to the hull. And this does take a few, a little bit to set up. So I'm probably going to also give a little bit of a CA glue assist to help it along just so it sets quicker. But I want to get a real nice bead going along the whole entire length of the piece. And then we're going to put the brass panels on each individual part once it's on the ship. I just think that's going to be easier as I'm looking at this. I've seen some other people who have done it slightly differently, but they also did not cut their promenade. So I haven't really seen too many people that are doing it the way I am, but I'm kind of forced to since I plan on sailing. So this, uh, it should work perfectly fine now. Um, as I've been going through the directions, I don't see any real major issue that's going to come from where I'm doing the split. And like I said, the deck will end up going on by magnet anyway. Rare earth magnets. They work well. I don't know if they're that rare though. Uh, 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 I know, a joke. Okay, so there we go. That one is just about ready. I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of CA in a couple spots so that it tacks up quicker if I can find my CA. I'll open a new one. because I don't know where the other one is at this point. All right, so I'm not going to go crazy here. I'm just going to kind of hit it in a couple random spots along the length of it. Just enough to help set I'm oh, sorry, I know I'm off the camera there, but yeah, just enough to help set it up. All right, so I know that is my position that I want my deck to be at, and basically here we go. This is the first uh, actual parts being glued on the build, I do believe. I mean, I don't really count the... Uh, the uh, prop shafts because they're not really part of the kit. Okay. It's actually setting up quite quickly. Lovely. Alright. So that guy is set and it is lining up perfectly back here with uh, the wall, as you can see. So that would be the well deck um, wall entrance. So yeah, no issue. Didn't set quite good there. So I'm going to probably come back through with a bead of uh, glue after this is all kind of set. But let me go ahead and glue down the other three pieces and then we'll be back. There's kind of a view of what we got going on now. I know it really doesn't look like the Titanic. Kind of looks like something a Cookie Monster took a bite out of, but just wait, we'll get there. All right, be back in a few. Okay, so here we are. Um, the both, both sides are on and are on solid. So I'm going to let this set up for just a little bit and we're going to come down. It's hard to even get this all in the view. Then we're going to come down and work on uh, getting our mini brass attached to the sides 
and pretty much wrap up this video. So I'm pretty excited about where we are right now. Um, I know we're not quite at the end of the video, but uh, I will tell you the next video. I know I had originally planned on doing um, the uh, the end, uh, motors, but I'm um, just not ready for that yet. I'd rather continue getting all of the hull right before I go and start putting motors in this. So the next video is going to end up being the stern plating, and then the following video is going to be the um, the uh, maritime models, woodies, whatever you want to call them, um, underneath panels. So that's what the next two videos will encompass anyway. But be back soon, and we'll be attaching this brass. Okay, here we go. So we are now pretty well smooth. We are ready. First thing I'm going to do is... Just kind of scuff up the back of the brass so that it has something to bite onto. So I'm just using some 80 grit, I'm sorry, 60 grit sandpaper here and just kind of scuffing it up just a little bit. Okay, so that goes there. And I just went back through, made sure one last time all the windows are in the right locations. I feel pretty good. We are pretty well golden. The holes are huge, obviously, at this point, but that was needed. Not to mention a lot of the holes were in the wrong locations, and that corrected it. So that is why they are so big did have a small, I dropped this one and uh, some of my glue split, so I just want to hit that a little bit again. There we go. Alright, now, I am going to be using a quick setting epoxy along with some CA glue to get these set. Um, I'm again going to end up using the clamps. Kind of like we did in the past. So let me get my epoxy first and then we will begin. So there was a ton, absolute ton of work that goes into doing this modification. If you uh, are new at modeling, if you do not really care about uh, the crazy extreme detail that this has, um, I would highly recommend you skip this if you if you don't know what you're getting yourself into. I pretty well knew what I was getting myself into, but uh, still, it had its uh, it had its fair share of challenges, we'll say. So this is a two-part mix epoxy. Okay. So what we're going to do then, stir it up. Ooh, it smells good. Not really. All right. So, move over because we're going to start on one end and work our way across. And I don't want to go crazy glooping this, glopping, whatever, loading this up because I don't want it to go through the portholes like I just did there. Um, Mainly trying to get it on the larger flat surfaces as much as possible and stay clear of those portholes. Sorry if I'm off camera. More flat areas. Um, I'm going a little bit, not thick, but... A little bit more 
liberally with it. No, I don't like that. It's not where I want it. Okay. And even if I do get a little on a porthole, it's not that big of a deal. I'll be able to poke it back out. Just uh, would prefer not to if I can avoid it. All right, time to lay this one on. Actually is doing well for first lay down and not disappointed. So what I'm gonna do now is clip it up. So I can get a good clip on it. There we go. You got a little bit there on a rivet. We'll make sure to get that off. There we go. Alright, clip, popsicle stick, now a couple of these spots like right here, I'll end up using a razor blade and putting CA glue up inside there, I don't want to try to risk doing something stupid. Okay. All right, first one is on. Now I'm going to do the next one. Oh boy. This stuff's already curing up. I'm going to have to mix more. That didn't give me much time to work with, honestly. Not going to mix as much this time. I thought I'd have a little bit more time to work with it. Oh, this stuff stinks. All right, I'm gonna start getting it on here. I'm less worried about the portholes after seeing the first one. It didn't really have too big of an effect, so I'm going a little bit more edgy or to the edge oh it's getting warm that's the chemical reaction of the two-part mix okay starting to get real warm all right I'm gonna put this down and yeah we are golden a little bit of sand right there no big deal all right, let me clamp it on, and then I'm going to pause it and come back and pretty much finish out the video because at that point, I think this one will pretty much be in the books. I know it might be getting a little long at this point. I haven't really done an edit to see where we're at, but uh, I wanted to try to get us to 
an end stage with uh, with the mini brass. And I think we're pretty much achieving that, so I'm happy. So, I will be back. Okay, so here we go. This is the mini brass attached, and uh, I still got to do the doors, and the gangway doors, and the coaling doors, but uh, pretty darn happy with it. Um, the detail level looks fantastic. Uh, everything is fitting really, really well. I don't have any other ripples. I know I've seen that before in, um, in some builds. So I'm happy to say I don't have any of that going on. Uh, a little bit of glue splatter here I gotta clean up, but um, all in all, I'm pretty darn excited with how this turned out. So hopefully this helps somebody out there. Um, there's some videos out there. I've seen some that are good. I've seen some that are not so good. Hopefully I contribute to uh, help somebody make a better build out of it, but um, this is how I did it. Uh, obviously, there is variations in the fact that uh, I'm going to be lifting from here, so that does make it a little bit different, but uh, ultimately it's the same build, um, pretty much. One thing I did notice down here at the bottom, I'm going to have to do some fill in um, on these holes. Otherwise, I'm going to have light bleed through, but uh, I'll be able to mask that. You can kind of see it back there. Um, that'll be in a future episode. Should not be too hard to do, but uh, it is something I noticed already. That really seems to be the only spot that's getting it. Um, up here, everything looks pretty decent. Uh, that right there... That's just plastic. That's not a light through. So, all right, we're going to end it here. So, again, please give a like and a subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time when we start to do the either the bottom here. I haven't decided if I'm going to go to the bottom or if I'm going to go over to do the stern plating, but uh, one of the two will be the next episode. So, see you soon. Thanks for watching.